Good morning, it's Jonathan Barrett with the uh, morning debrief. The current time is 8.23 and it's fire Friday the 11th of February. Um, I guess what was billed to be quite an interesting night with what was happening in Egypt seems to have turned a little bit. Um, obviously with Mubarak uh, basically saying that he will re be removed on democratic basis and not through, um, through, the, through the process of the pop popular people's movements. Um, so as a result of that, uh, we have got concerns leading into the market. Um, there have been calls for quite significant rallies tomorrow um, or Friday Egypt time and uh, I think if anything there the market might look to try and put on some risk aversion trades um, you know, if in fact they don't get what they want. Uh, what do we mean by risk aversion trades? It could be uh, things like uh, oil, oil breaking through 88.10 on the top side, um, you know, gold sort of breaking through 13.70. Um, US dollar continuing its march higher. Remember the US dollar index 78.32 had a strong night last night. So if anything there, let's keep close. Those are the couple of trigger points which I've mentioned if in fact things start to escalate. Um, I think when I really look at it, I, I can see that you can't just dismiss a government um, due to uh, the way the constitution is actually set up. Um, there is a process, but I think that process needs to be followed. And I think that's what we were expecting, not the, the, the quick removal of him, but also the way we would expect it to unfold in a democracy um, to be voted out. So I guess, if anything, there's a heightened concern there. It continues to be that. We'll just have to see how the markets react to that. Uh, Sydney is probably the first market to be open, or Australia. So uh, let's see how that uh, does unfold. I think expectations, as I suggested, would be a flight to risk aversion trades, a building Middle Eastern premium. Um, you know, ahead of the weekend. Remember, we've got two days there that anything can happen. So I think, if anything, people would look to go to cash, go to the sideline, and go to those risk-averse um, trades. Anyway, let's have a little bit of a, a catch-up on what happened last night and uh, a little bit of uh, a rundown on what we think could occur. Okay, um, I guess, uh, first of all, um, let's have a look at uh, uh, what happened with the Dow. And uh, the Dow closed down uh, six... Uh, let me just refresh that. That's... I don't think it's right. Um, it's right. The Dow closed down 12, uh, 10 points. It was down a little bit earlier, weaker, a little while ago, 12,229. S&P was up nine, and the Nasdaq was up one. Uh, the top uh, 50 in Europe was down five. Uh, FTSE was down 32. The CAC was up four, and the DAX was up 19. Local market closed uh, up. No, sorry, down five points, 4,883. As mentioned, we still have to wait and see a little bit as to uh, how, this effect, how this news will affect the equity markets. Um, we don't have any markets open at the moment. I'm just checking that E-mini uh, at the moment, 13, um, let's just check it out, 13, 18 and three quarters. Yeah, we've still got to wait to uh, see a little bit of reaction there. Okay, uh, let's have a look at dollar index. So as we know, dollar index was uh, slightly higher uh, last night. Uh, if it does take out that 78.30, expect it to run through to 79.80. That's something we're looking for. Uh, looking at crude, quite a volatile night. We're still waiting for that to come on board. 88.30 is a trigger point for us on that. That concludes this range, that top range of 92.50 and the down range of 85.86. If that holds, uh, then obviously it breaks 88.20, we're back in the range. Uh, copper, uh, 454.40. Um, found a little of support, as we mentioned, a bit of profit taking there, but we've also got to be relatively positive that if it takes out uh, that's uh, 456, then we're back to the new highs. Still concerns there on um, inventories or sort of supply issues. Gold, 1362, 1363. Um, you can see where it needs to be taken out. Just that high there, um, you know, that high there just needs to be taken out. And if that's the case, then we'll see it actually uh, continue to track a little bit higher. Um, you know, obviously a break through this 1365 area um, or even closer to that uh, 1366. Uh, we'll see, uh, I think, a run to the top side. Okay, Aussie dollar, US dollar with US dollar strength under pressure, uh, 1.0037. Uh, found a little bit of support here. Let's see what happens. Obviously, the alleys are pretty supportive of it. Um, you know, I really want to see if it breaks through 101, uh, then onwards and uh, upwards. Dollar yen had a good move, 83.21, quite a strong move there. Let's get a little bit more information there. As you can see, it's taken out those highs, so I'd like to see a little bit of a pullback. Um, still within its range, but uh, we still like what's happening there. Local market, uh, local market, 48.79. Um, look, 
it, it, is, it is breaking. As long as it stays above that 48.30, then we've got to be positive as to what happens. And uh, that's actually doing that for us. So, um, you know, th these areas here are all the key for it. And uh, my expectations are that as long as it stays above it, that has turned pretty much support that area we mentioned. So whilst that remains there, we've got to be uh, quite positive for a move to the top side. Obviously, with what's happening in Egypt, it might affect a lot of the equity markets, but uh, too early to tell yet as to what could occur. On the local market, on the national market, sorry, 1380 is the, um, that's the Dow, uh, the E-mini there, and uh, obviously see quite volatile there after being quite weak. Um, once again, you know, take out that top side with positive. Uh, we did get mixed data last night in the States. Remember, Cisco's reports weren't that positive, uh, but we did get a positive result in terms of the jobless claims number, uh, which suggesting uh, less people looking for uh, are claiming uh, they're, they're, they've lost their jobs. Okay, now we did get a bit of a sell-off in the agricultural markets. Corn, soy and wheat all have a sell-off. I'm trying to work out whether that has anything to do with Egypt, but I think it is a little bit of profit-taking. Um, so uh, let's see what happens. Um, if anything there, the, the trades remain good, but um, I think that any, any market that moves so fast, so short, in such a short space of time needs some correction. Also cotton, another very strong move for cotton, and it's amazing. What I would suggest is people start to look at some of those polyester stocks. Um, you know, if you can find some, because they'll be the ones that people will refer to. Because remember, um, you know, when you look at look at across the the line, if cotton's too expes expensive, you're looking for a substitute, and uh, of course, this is a substitute which they'll be looking at um, because it is relatively cheap. So uh, have a look at that. I think that's not a bad thing to um, keep an eye on. Um, but apart from that, that's on the market. Now tonight, not a lot of data. Our trade balance in the states, University of Michigan confidence. PPI in the UK, um, consumer price in West Germany as well. So uh, let's see how that unfolds. Well, pretty much um, that's pretty much about it from me. Um, I hope everyone has a good uh, good day. Let's uh, keep close to what's happening in Egypt. Obviously, that's going to be the focal point for the markets. And uh, let's see if hopefully nothing too uh, too dramatic happens there. That's about it. Have a good day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.